Hey guys, I'm Kevin and today I'd like to show you my inverted pendulum project that I've been working on in recent weeks. Um, I'll show you how it's set up and I'd like to ask for some advice in the end. Yeah, here we go. So, as a base unit I used an old inkjet printer. I salvaged pretty much every part that I could find. Um, I'm using its linear and rotational quadrature encoders to sense the linear motion of the card and the rotational movement of the pendulum. Um, up here for example you can see the uh, you can see the rotational quadrature encoder with its encoding disk and back here you can see the linear encoding strip. I also used a photo interrupter I found in the printer just as a limit switch. Uh, the whole thing is running of a benchtop power supply. I'm running at 30 volts right now. Uh, in, the pr in the process of running it, I never exceed one amp. But uh, as far as I'm aware of, the motor is supposed to run at 48 volts, but I just don't have any means to create 48 volts in my shop. So 30 gives me plenty of power. Uh, the mechanical unit here of the pendulum, um, that's pretty much just hacked together by myself. Uh, I, I'm using two bearings here, uh, one here, one here, and a shaft that I machined on the lathe and yeah, the whole assembly is running pretty much frictionless. So for the electronic parts of it, I'm using an Arduino Mega. Uh, please uh, don't mind my wiring. It's still just a prototype and yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the motor gets driven by a L298N H-bridge motor driver. It's pretty much just sending a PWM signal to the motor and therefore varying its speed and direction. Uh, down here I just hooked me up some basic potentiometers to adjust the PID gains on the fly. It's just much more convenient that way than always having to change it in the source code and having to upload it all on and over again. Yeah, so uh, let's start showing you how this thing works, how the calibration run that it does in the beginning works and how to get this thing going. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll upload the code and first thing that will happen is before it's moving anything, what will happen is it'll save the straight downward position as zero. So therefore, it's really important that the pendulum at the beginning, when I, when I upload the code, is hanging straight down and not moving whatsoever. So I'll upload the code. Uh, first thing, it's going to save this position, and then it's going to drive to the limit switch and set its linear position there. It's going to drive back into the middle, and now it's pretty much waiting for me to manually bring it in an upright position to start balancing it. There's no need to try to balance the pendulum once it's already fallen over like 45 degrees or whatsoever. So it's going to wait for me until I bring it up manually and then it's trying to balance it. Yeah, the, the table tennis plate that I'm using here is a little a little less sturdy than I expected. I wasn't testing it on this plate before, but as you can see, it's balancing. Well, so you can see the pendulum balancing here. Um, on the computer screen you can see the serial monitor, I'm outputting quite a lot of data and putting it into a CSV file afterwards to plot me some nice plots. Um, I'm exporting pretty much everything that I can capture. I'm plotting the linear position, the angular position, the linear speed, the angular speed, the PID gains and some variables more. So how does the control of the system work? Um, it's pretty much two PID controllers. I'll start with the first one and go on into the second. The first one is called the rotational controller. 
And what it does, it takes a value as a reference signal that's called rotational set point. That, in the simplest case, is just zero. That means straight up. And it's, it's, it does its PID calculations and outputs a value that ranges from minus 255 up to plus 255. Normally, you would send this value directly as a PWM signal to motors. But uh, in the process, I found out that this doesn't work. The motor needs a certain level of PWM to even start moving. So every value below, let's say, 60 doesn't make the car move in any way. So what I do is I map the output that once range from 0 to 255 into this new range that's starting at the zero point that I found out where the card will barely start moving. I call that setup zero speed up to 255 and in a negative range just as well. The same way. This PBM signal then will get sent to the motor driver and to the motor and therefore will drive the card. At the end of the process the angle is measured and fed back and compared to the reference signal. The system with this one PID controller is balancing the panel quite fine, it's working, but uh, the problem is it doesn't work for long because eventually the card will run into the end of the travel. It's just an ink chip printer, I don't have unlimited rail and so this was a real problem so that it couldn't balance it for two, three, four seconds because it would run into the end of the travel. So what I'd had to do is uh, I had to find a way to control the, the angle of the pendulum, that it stays up, upright, and at the same time control the linear position so that the card stays in the middle of the travel. That's where the second PID controller comes into play. The second PID controller is taking a linear set point as a reference signal that's pretty much just middle of the track, the linear set point. And what it outputs, it outputs the rotational set point. So the value that is the reference signal for the rotational controller, the outer controller, the linear controller outputs that. So the outer controller sets the set point for the inner controller. Uh, in a way that when the card is, let's say, in the left side of the travel, left side of the middle of the trail, it will tell the inner controller not to achieve an angle of zero, but it will tell the inner controller to try to achieve an angle where the pendulum is leaning slightly towards the middle of the track, so that it will go back to the middle. That's how it's working. And as you can see, this whole system is working quite fine, but as I said, it's not very responsive at all. Um, right now, I'm using, for the linear controller, I'm not using PIDs, it's just a straight P controller. That's just what seemed to work uh, when I tested it. And for the inner controller, uh, for the rotational controller, I'm using a PI controller. Again, that was just what seemed to work. And uh, just for the sake of you knowing, as a, for the linear controller, as a P game, I'm using 0 0.00126. And for the inner controller, for the rotational controller, I'm using a P game at 4.7. And for the I game of the inner controller, I'm using a value of 206. So you see, I'm using a highly integral uh, control system here, or I'm using the integral part of the PID controller much, much more than the P part. Um, again, I don't know if that's right, if that's the way to go, but that was just what worked for me. Well, yeah, so there it is. That's my pendulum. And at the end, I'd like to ask, ask for some advice. I 
do think that the approach, my approach to controlling this pendulum is somehow fundament fundamentally flawed. I do think that something could be done better. I've seen pendulums being stated to be controlled by PID controllers running much, much better, much, much more responsive. And I just do think I, I can do better. I don't know how, but yeah, that's where hopefully you will come in and give me some advice. I mean, I have a background in mechanical engineering, so I don't have a problem deriving the equations of motions for this thing, but uh, when it comes to control theory, I just don't know anything about it. Yeah, so there it is. Please leave me a comment, please help me, and I hope I'll get this thing running in a better fashion.